Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the null hypothesis because quite often we're not quite sure how to set that up. And so here we're going to do it through an example. So let's say that we're looking at the air quality and there's such a thing as an air quality index, AQI, and it's considered that if it's above 100, the air is considered unhealthy. And they may tell people that may be sensitive to bad air to stay indoors and to limit exercises outdoors when the air is in an unhealthy state. If, however, the AQI is less than or equal to 100, that is considered okay, the air is healthy and we can exercise. Of course, there's a, there's a, a range of healthy and healthiness, but let's just cut it off at that level right there. So let's say an ecologist is trying to show that the air in LA is unhealthy. So, how do we do that? Using hypothesis testing. Well, we first need to come up with a null hypothesis. And notice that the null hypothesis defines the opposite of what, what you're trying to show. And then you're trying to reject that null hypothesis so that the alternate hypothesis is true. So, in this case, what we're going to say is that the null hypothesis is that the AQI is equal to 100. Now notice we said equal to 100, but that really implies equal to or less than 100, and that the air is healthy. That's a hypothesis that the ecologist is trying to reject. So again, the null hypothesis is the opposite of what you're trying to show. And then you're trying to reject that hypothesis to show that you're correct, that the air is unhealthy as you're suspecting. Now, if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, then you fail to prove what you're trying to prove. All right. So, the null hypothesis says that the AQI, the air quality index, is 100, or that implies 100 or less, which means it would be health, healthy, healthy air. So, the alternate, H sub A, or alternate hypothesis, is that the AQI is greater than 100. So if we reject the null hypothesis, that would make the alternate hypothesis correct. That means that the air is unhealthy, which is what he's trying to show. So the null hypothesis is typically opposite what you're trying to show, and the alternate hypothesis is equal to what you're trying to show. Now, you're going to set the level of significance. You then take a random sample. You want a certain sample size equal to n. You then calculate the test statistic, and then if the test statistic is greater than z, z is that number that defines the boundary, it's the z scores we call it, that defines the boundary of the critical region, and if t is greater than z, that means it falls into the critical region, then we'll end up rejecting the null hypothesis with a certain confidence level. What's the confidence level? It's 100% minus the level of significance. So typically that's a 5%, so it would be 95% confidence level that we're able to reject the null hypothesis, which means that we have a 95% confidence level that the air is unhealthy. Of course, this is all hypothetical. We just threw some numbers out there, but that is how we do that. Remember that the null hypothesis defines the opposite of what you're trying to show, and the alternate hypothesis is what you're trying to show, which is the one that becomes true if we can reject the null hypothesis. And that's how we think about the concept of the null hypothesis. I think that defines it pretty well.